Marriage was established in the Garden of Eden between Adam and Eve when God sainted it as a divine union. And the two of you have been a stellar example of love publicly for all of us. I think oftentimes we enjoy your content, but most people don't get the opportunity to say thank you. Thank you for how you have shown us how to survive in love and how to endure in love. Thank you for allowing us to watch you raise your children and to build your brand. But most importantly, thank you for being examples of Christ's love, even on some of the largest stages. It is a delight today to see the furtherance between this amazing couple, the beautiful, intelligent, authentic, creative, Melissa Fredericks, and the incredibly hilarious, innovative, kind, and dapper today, Kevin Fredericks. The adversary is never excited about longevity and love. And the way that he attacks us is never through some spiritual deity that is unseen. He works through people to try to separate and divide that which has strength and longevity. The one thing that is always tested in a relationship is loyalty. And most people will throw that word around casually, but the thing about loyalty that's interesting is this. It cannot be loyalty until it is tested by betrayal. You cannot know someone is loyal until they have the opportunity to betray you. And what the adversary does is he presents opportunities in heightened levels of success to lose your mind. At the lowest level, it's easy to be faithful. When you're broke, you gotta stay together because the bills don't get paid. <laughs> but as you continue to progress and grow, and as you continue to expand and extend, there's always going to be the temptations to forsake the vows you've made. But when you can say, regardless of what's been presented to me, because there's a lot of women that suddenly think you're handsome, Kevin, because of all the success that you have. But never forget who was with you when you didn't have all that you achieved. Stay loyal. And Melissa, you've always been beautiful. It's just that now you're on a larger stage and people are trying to figure out how he got you. So you've got to make sure to turn away from those and remain loyal. In your loyalty, God will not only bless your union, but he will honor your children as they observe this stick to that you demonstrate in your longevity of love. Oh, oh my God. You know, this is the first. This is? <laughs> Hmm, our first time after 20 years. Hmm, marvelous, marvelous. Marvelous. Hmm. To my first child, God blessed me when he decided that I would be the one he would use to birth you. You are always in have always been a gift and an outstanding daughter and an example to your sisters and to your niece because she told me personally that she wants to be a big sister just like you. Aww. McKinley said that. Never allow anything or anyone to ever come between y'all, ever. Melissa, I love what I heard you say and it has stayed with me from the first time I heard it when you said that you are marriage champion. So I toast to you both on Champions of Marriage and may the love hour resurrect. So we're going to toast to Kevin and Melissa and then we're going to toast to the love hour resurrecting to the bride and groom. On June 26, 2004, we stood before our family, friends, and God, and we made vows of hope to each other. And I say hope because we didn't know what the future held for us, or if our love would endure the unknown. Because marriage be hard. And we were young, naive, and optimistic, but love and hope were, were more than enough. 
If you don't mind, and because I love crowd participation, because I grew up churchy, I'm going to recite our vowels, and I need y'all to say and did after each of them. That's y'all job, okay? And because after 20 years, we had did that. The vows we made were, I vow to have and to hold. And did. For richer or poorer. And did. In sickness and in health. And did. To love and to cherish. And did. Forsaking all others. And did. Until death do us part. And did. Y'all wasn't supposed to say and did on that part. We is alive. And will. Gracious and Heavenly Father, I thank you for everything that we have experienced today. I thank you for the divine love that has been set in front of us. The love that is shown between Melissa, Kevin, their beautiful sons, their extended family. One of the biggest regrets I have is telling you that I didn't think we were soulmates. I was reading the Purpose Driven Life book and Rick Warren said there's no such thing as soulmates. God doesn't care who you marry, he said. You marry someone based on social, economic reasons, etc. Like both of our dads being in the army and us being stationed at, at Fort Lewis. I remember looking in your eyes at the moment and feeling like I made a mistake. One I'd like to correct now. Like a good former youth pastor, I looked up soulmates and here's what I found. A soulmate is a person with whom you have an immediate connection the moment you meet. A connection so strong that you are drawn to them in a way that you have never experienced before. As this connection develops over time, you experience a love so deep, so strong and complex that you begin to doubt that you ever truly loved anyone prior. Nothing could describe you better. The moment I laid eyes on you, that first day of school in 11th grade, nothing else mattered before. Nothing else in the future would ever matter as much as you. The most luck I've ever had in life is having Miss Chapman's U.S. History class with you on the first day. The best decision I've ever made in this life is asking you to be my girlfriend and then my wife. The most beautiful part of today is that I get to say those vows again. But in my own words, now that I'm older, wiser and I've experienced those vows as more than words on paper, they've become reality. Like when I had to have emergency C-section with Isaiah and he wouldn't let anyone in the room until my blood pressure normalized. You were stressed out, but you were so protective. My mom might still be mad about that. <laughs> or like when you manifested our life, when we lived in a 1200 square foot home in rainy Washington and somehow you had vision despite what you saw. Or like, come close to me. Or like when I say, it sure is hot out here, you know to say. I don't mind though. <laughs> yes, that's a lyric from Mary Mary, but we literally quote it all the time. All the time we say this. It's hot out here. It is, and it shows up it's hot out here. I don't mind though. I don't mind though. I'm just glad to be free. <laughs> or if I say, thank you, sir. You know that's a random spelling bee tournament we watch while at UW and for some reason it just stuck. Or like when we celebrated becoming New York Times best-selling co-authors together and held each other tightly when tragedy struck the next day. The funny thing about time, wisdom, and experience is it can sometimes make you jaded or even deflated about life and love. But today, at 40 years old, 20 years of marriage and 24 years together and knowing everything I know today and what it took to get here, I still say yes. I fell in love with you over a, mi a million little moments. The first time I saw you, our first date at the dollar movies, our first kiss, the pride I felt to drive you around my first car, the late night trips to IHOP in college when we felt like we were being bad, the trips to Portland to go to the Lloyd Center because they had no sales tax, even though we didn't still have no money to buy that either. It was just nice to see what it could cost. The birth of our kids, buying our first house, I'm either sweating or crying and no one can tell the difference. <laughs> Going to Mariners games for three innings, when we packed up and moved to the sinking sand of LA, scared, 
When you preached that time at Woman Evolve, when you wrote your first book, when you stood with me when we lost Jay, things I never thought I'd do, I did with you, like getting a tattoo, which is sin. <laughs> Y'all call it whatever you want. Leviticus told me straight up and I did it. And I repented, but the mark is still there. Come on. Just like sin. I'm not going to do it. I hope to see a lifetime of more because I'm still falling in love with you more and more every day. I love being able to witness you guys' love up close. It is amazing. It is a privilege. It is an honor uh, to be related to you guys, to see you guys. I tell people all the time I am a fan of the on stages. Uh, I am stage crew. I am Patreon. I am all of the above um, because who you guys present to be is really who you are, and that doesn't go for everybody. And so it is amazing to be able to see you guys. I'm so happy um, that you guys have made it this far and are continuing you're amazing and I love you guys and I'm just so excited to be here and to be able uh, to witness this. So congratulations. I still say I do because life with you hasn't deflated me. In fact, it's done the opposite. I have more confidence and enthusiasm in my yes today because you have proven to be the man I said yes to 20 years ago. The life we built is no longer a hope or a dream, but a reality that makes me enthusiastically say yes again and again to you. We have grown up together and built a life together. From Kevin and Melissa to Kevin, Melissa, Isaiah, and Josiah. And Monty. To Kev on stage and Miss Kev on stage. And today, what I know is I still choose you. I still give you my yes and take on your name two times as Miss Frederick, Melissa Frederick, and as Miss Kev on stage because you make me proud to be your wife. The only time I didn't fall in love with you more was when I failed that one time at UW Hub and you laughed at me for 30 minutes. Luckily, I already loved you. People think love is magic, love is meant to be, and while that is true, what they miss is that love is work. Constant work every day to be a better partner, constant loving, learning, adjusting. Relationships are finding the person that's worth all that work, because it is hard, but you are worth everything. Every adjustment, every therapy session, every apology, every new thing to learn, you are worth it all. You make it all worth it. Your relationship with Jason shaped you into the man you've become. His quick thinking mind sparked that fuse in you that everyone sees today. And I see that you're going to take that 81 legacy on to new heights you've never thought possible because as he always says we act like we're supposed to be here and yes you are supposed to be here because y'all don't know okay all right and i'm pretty sure he's in heaven screaming your name in everybody's ears everything, I have everything with you. With nothing, I have everything in you. I love you. So today, I commit to you no longer in the form of hope, but in what I know. And to borrow some inspiration from one of my most recent smut novels. <laughs> today, I, Melissa Fredericks, vow to choose you always even after and even after that forever my forever i do forever fredericks the lord i thank you for 20 but I bless the next 20. I thank you, God, that this is only the beginning of their story of success, 
but because of their faithfulness to one another and most importantly to you, you'll continue to expand them in every way. I pray health, I pray strength, I pray peace, not only for them, but for their children, and one day, their grandchildren. And we thank you for all things, in Jesus' name, amen. And it will go until it starts again. by the power invested in me throughout all states, I would like to quote a famous philosopher named Tony Baker. When you leave this evening and go back to your villa, give her the 20-year bonus. You may now salute your bride. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. Kev on stage. Let's make some noise.